Hey guys, in this lesson we're looking at area and perimeter of composite figures. So to start off with, we're going to talk about what a composite figure is. A composite figure is a figure that is made up of two or more geometric figures. So it could be something that looks like this, kind of like an arrow. And if you look at it and break it up like this, you've got a triangle with a square. And with problems like this, they could ask you to find the perimeter of our composite figure. And whenever you be finding the perimeter, you're gonna be finding the distance around the outside of the composite figure. And you find that by adding the lengths of the sides on the outside. So that means if there's a length there, 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 on all those sides, you would take all those values and add them together. Even if you are able to find the value of that length right there and it does make the side length of a triangle for you, it's not the perimeter of the both of the whole figure together. So it's not considered a part of the perimeter of the com composite figure. So you would not use that for your part of your perimeter. And you would just, again, take all the side lengths, add them together. Looking at the area of a composite figure, it's the amount of space inside a composite figure. So whereas with perimeter, we would just be looking at the outside values that make up the whole thing. With area, we would be looking at the space on the inside. So everything on the inside. And you find that by calculating the areas of the individual shapes themselves. So for this one, you would do the area of the, tri of the triangle first, and then add that to the area of the rectangle, and that'll give you the area of the composite figure. And there's lots of different ways that you could see these. You could see these in the coordinate plane, which we'll talk about later. You could also just see them as independent 2D shapes. So if we're looking at this, they can ask you for shapes like this about the area and the perimeter. And finding the perimeter isn't for these isn't too bad. You just, okay, remember our definition for perimeter means all the sides added together. So you take the sides, 6 plus 13 plus 20 plus 8 plus 4 plus 4 plus 30 plus 25 and you add those all together. And in this case, you would get perimeter is equal to 110 units. So for problems like these, perimeter isn't too bad. It's the area that can be tricky. And whenever you look at these figures, you're gonna to have to divide them up into smaller figures that you can find the area of. And you could divide this figure this way, there and there, or you could divide it this way, there and there. It's whatever you see and whatever works for you is what you use. For me, what I see in this one is I see this figure being made up of a rectangle. So this rectangle here. And then I see it being made up of this rectangle here. And then the square here. So that's the shapes that I see that make up this composite figure. Once you find your shapes, you then have to find um, the length and the width, the base and the height, whatever parts of the sides that you need to find. So if I look at this one, this one's the area of a rectangle. So the, I know the area of a rectangle is area is equal to base times height. So if I look at this one, area is gonna be equal to the base for this one, I'm gonna get from up here, is gonna be six, times the height of this one is gonna be 25. So if we do the math for that, six times 25 is gonna give us 150. And that's just for this little part right there. We have to find the area for all of it. So area is gonna be equal to 150, so the first part, plus, we gotta find the second part. So if we look at this next rectangle right here, we've got a couple values on it. We've got 30, but this 30 represents this whole long bottom side there. So we can't use 30 for the base of this rectangle. Area is equal to base times height. So if we look, 
from there to there is going to be 20. And when we're working with rectangles, if we remember our definition, the opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent. So area is going to be equal to this base is going to be 20. Times the height, well, this 8 is only for that part right there. We want the height of this whole entire side. So this whole entire side is made up of the 8 and the 4 both. So 8 plus 4 is going to give us 12. So area is going to be equal to 20 times 12. So area is going to be equal to 240. So area is going to be equal to 150 plus 240 plus this last one, it's a little 4 by 4, it's going to be 16. Because area of a square is equal to four sides squared. So area is going to be equal to 4 squared. And 4 squared is 16. And if we add those all together, the 150 plus 240 plus 16, that's going to give us an area equal to 406 units squared. Looking at the next one, and again, you break up this, the shapes the way that you see and that makes sense to you. Um, some people may break this shape up as a right there and just draw straight lines there and there. Whenever I did this one, I saw one big long rectangle down through here. Another rectangle there and another rectangle there. Okay. And for these, they want to know what is the area and the perimeter. Let's do the perimeter first. Perimeter is going to be equal to all the sides added together. So we've got 6 plus 8 plus 11 plus 10 plus 11 plus 5 plus 9 plus 15 plus 15 plus 38 and I've already got the 6 there so we're good. So perimeter is going to be equal to if we add that all up all together it's going to be 128 units. So now if we're doing area, area is going to be equal to our three rectangles that we have. So area for this one is going to be equal to base times height. The base for this one is going to be 10. And then our height is going to be 11. So area is going to be equal to 10 times 11. So area for this rectangle is going to be 110. Looking at this one, area for that rectangle, again, base times height. Area is going to be equal to the base is going to be 38 times 6. So 38. 38 times 6 is going to be 288 and then the area for this one is going to be equal to base times height we've got another rectangle and if we look right here I know that says 15 but that represents the whole entire side there and I just want this little part so that side's going to be 9 this side's going to be 15 so area is going to be equal to 15 times 9 Area is going to be equal to 135. So if I, we take those three areas and we add them together, that'll give us the total area. So we've got 110 plus 288 plus 135. And if we add those all together, the area is going to be 473 units squared. Looking at another example, you could divide it here and have a rectangle there and divide it there and have a big long rectangle and then two smaller rectangles on the side. I chose to find this shape right here and then this shape right there and that way for me it was 
better to do two big shapes with the smaller shape. So just double check and make sure that we have our sides. So area for this one is going to be equal to this length right here is 16. That length right there is going to be 15, so that's going to give us a rectangle. Area is going to be equal to base times height. So area is going to be equal to 16 times 15. So area is going to be equal to 240. And then if we're looking for this triangle down here, sorry, this rectangle down here, this 21 represents the whole big long side. And we don't want that. We just want the shorter side over here. So area for this rectangle, area is equal to base times height. Area is equal to the base is going to be 12 times the height is 18. So our area is going to be equal to 216. And we still need to find this little box in here. So to find that little box, we've got this whole big side and we want to take this part off of it. So this part is 18. So if we do 21 minus 18, it'll give us that little box right there. And 21 minus 18 is going to be 3, so this side's going to be 3. So now we need the length from there to there to give us our base for our, our rectangle. So area is equal to base times height. And if we look down here, the whole part of that side right there is 12. But if we only have this part of it, we would have to take the 6 off of it or cover it up. And if we do that, that'll make this side be 6. So the area for that one is going to be equal to 6 times 3. So the area for that one is going to be equal to 18. We could have also used the values up here to find this, this side right here. The whole part of this one is 15. Take off the part that's 9, and that'll still, 15 minus 9 will still give you 6. So if we find the area for this one, area is going to be equal to 216 plus 18 plus 240. So the area for this example is going to be 474 square units. And then to do the perimeter, perimeter is going to be equal to, whenever you do perimeter, always find kind of the same spot in a shape. Start at that spot for every shape. Like I've been starting um, and add from there. So 15, So if we do our perimeter, we're going to do 15 plus 16 plus 9, and we want the whole big side, so we're just going to go with the, what they originally gave us, plus 21 plus 12 plus 18 plus 6 plus 19. And if we add all those sides together, the perimeter is going to be equal to 116 units.